academic, today let's take a look at IGCSE menstruations and trigonometrical questions. Without much ado, let's begin. Okay. Here is uh, we have a a prism. This sh shape is like a cake, a piece of cake. You know, when you buy a cake, you buy a birthday cake, you slice it to different shape, or you buy pizza, you slice it to small pieces. So this pizza or cake is a sh this shape is described as a prism in maceration. Okay? It's described as a prism in maceration. So we say the prism has a cross-sectional area in the shape of a sector. So you must know which one is the cross-sectional area. We say the cross-sectional area is in the shape of a sector, meaning this top one. This top one is there. And this sector is the cross-sectional area. Okay? So you know you can calculate volume by finding the cross-sectional area multiplied by the height. Or multiply by the length, by the height. Is that okay? This is the radius. This is the radius. Okay? This is the radius r centimeter. So the first question says we should calculate the radius r centimeter. So to find the radius, you can see that this is the arc length. You know, if you have a circle, if you have a circle like this, let's say this is our circle, and you have a radius here, you have a center of the circle at this point. And you have one radius here, and this is another radius, okay, this is one radius, and this is another radius. This is the piece of uh, slice that you've cut out. This is the piece of slice that you've cut out from the cake, okay, this is the piece of cake, slice of the cake that is cut out. This angle is 50 degree, this angle is 50 degree. This angle is 50 degree, and here, here is a 20 centimeter. Here is 20 centimeter. The arc length is is given already. The length of the arc is given as 20 centimeter. Okay, the length of the arc is given as 20 centimeter. This is the arc. This place is the arc length. This place is the arc length, okay? Is the arc length. This place is the arc length as shown. Okay. Now, here is give us 20 centimeter. It's give us 20 centimeter, which means the arc length is 20. The arc length is at 20 centimeter. But we don't know the radius. So we can use the arc length formula to calculate. We know the angle. We can use the arc length formula to calculate the radius. So the arc length formula, to calculate radius, we must use the arc length formula. Now, let's uh, imbibe that uh, arc. The arc length formula, you say arc, arc is equal to the angle or arc length equal to the angle theta over 360, angle theta over 360 times 2 pi r. Why? Because the length is a, a part of a circumference. It's a fraction of, it's part of a circumference. So we say times 2 pi r, times not pi r squared. If we're looking for the area of the sector, we say times pi r squared. Then this one, we're just looking for the arc length. And the arc length has been given to us to be 20, 20 centimeters. So we're going to replace the arc, arc length with 20. So I'm going to write 20 here. So we say 20. 20 centimeter is equal to the angle between the two radii, between the two radius, is 50. So we say 50 over 360 times 2 pi r. 50 all over 360 times 2 pi r. Times 2 pi r. So the, pi, the value of pi is 3.14. So we say times 2 times 3.14 times 3.14, then times the radius r. We don't know r, we want to find r, times the radius r, okay? We don't know r, we're going to look for r. We make r the subject. So one thing we can do, for example, z, this zero can cancel zero, and then we can cross, cross multiply the denominator, okay? 20 times 36, 20 multiplied by 36, you get 720, right? You get 720. 
Okay, the quick way to do it, you just say 36 times 2, you get 72. And then you add the 0. You say 720 is equal to 5 times 2 is 10. 10 times this, you get 31.4. It's equal to 31.4. 31.4 arrow. 31.4 arrow. So we're going to make arrow the subject by dividing both sides by 31.4. To find arrow, you divide both sides by 31.4. We divide both sides by 31.4. So we divide here by 31.4 so that you cancel yourself out. Okay, on this right side. And then on the left side, we say 720 divided by 31.4. 720 divided by 31.4. That will give us the radius. That will give us the radius. Our radius is 22.9 to one decimal place, which is approximately 23. Okay, our radius, R, is approximately, approximately 23. Okay? Our radius is approximately 23. If you get 23.9, it's still correct. If you leave it as 22, sorry, 22.9, it's, it's still very correct. Centimeter. Or you write 23, approximately 23. In one decimal place is 22.9. To the nearest whole number is 23 centimeters. So that's our radius. So that's the first part, the A part of the question, that we should calculate the radius. Okay? That's the A part of the question that you should calculate the radius. So you can check whether you're correct and you tip yourself if you're correct. Now we move on to the next one, the B part of the question. Is it calculate uh, the cross section? You know, this calculate stands for all the questions under it. Is it calculate the radius? Then B, calculate. You always read it from calculate the cross sectional area of the prism. Now, what is the cross sectional area? Is the area of a sector. Okay, this question A. The cross sectional area will become the area of the sector because they told us that the prison has a cross sectional area in the shape of a sector. They've stated it in the question, in the shape of a, a sector. Now let's calculate the, the B, which is the cross sectional area. To find the cross sectional area, you find the area of a sector. So we say area sector, meaning area of sector. So I just for short, I write area sector area of sector is equal to we write the formula if you don't know the formula there's no way you'll be able to get it correctly is equal to theta the angle the same angle that's been given which is 50 degree over 360 multiplied by over 360 multiplied by pi r square this time around because we're dealing with area we're dealing with area so multiply by pi r square now we you know we've already calculated the radius so we can use it con conveniently so area of sector will be equal to is what we're looking for equal to the angle which is 50 which is 50 all over three, 360 all over 360 times pi okay which is pi we take pi to be 3.14 3.14 times the radius square. So if you approximate it to the nearest whole number, to make it easy for us, you say times 23 square. 23 square. Okay, so this will be, we, whatever we get here will be the area of the sector. Is that okay? So now it's time to pause and key into the calculator. Okay, we can say if it, uh, 0 cancel 0, 5 divided by 36 times 3.14 times 23 squared. You can key everything once and you get your answer. So key everything to the calculator once and give us uh, whatever you, you have as the area of the sector. Whatever you have as the area. Okay? So what do we get? We get uh, 230, right? 230.7, 230.7 centimeters square. So we get 230.7. At this point, you pause the video, you you key, you calculate it with using your calculator, and also like, share, and subscribe to our page. Okay. So you get 270, 230, 
230.7 centimeters square. So that's our area of the sector, area of the sector. Okay? Now, the area of the sector, remember, remember the area of the sector is the cross-sectional area of this prism. You know, when they ask you to calculate volume of prism, you say cross-sectional area multiplied by the length or multiplied by the height. Cross-sectional area multiplied by the length or multiplied by the height. In this case, it's height. So the C question, let's say what, the, what it's going to ask us, say the total surface area of the prism. Okay, now we're going to look for total surface area. Before we go to uh, uh, DD, which is the volume, uh, let's find the total surface area. Total surface area, if you look at this, uh, if you look at this uh, uh, prism, if you look at this uh, prism, yeah, the sector on top, you also have another one at the bottom. So we already get, once you get the area of the sector, you know, the slice, the top, it has corresponding one at the bottom. It has a corresponding slice, like the, sec the same sector on top also has a corresponding one at the bottom. So we multiply whatever we get as the area of sector by two. So tw you can say 231, approximately 231 times two, times two to get the both top and bottom. Multiply by, so we get the top and bottom of the, of the shape. So we say times two, we get two, six, four, six, uh, four, six, two. We get four, six, two centimeters square for both top and bottom of the slice of the cake, centimeters square. Okay, now let's look at the shape again. Where else do we have? We have, uh, we have this rectangular face. We have this rectangular face. When we, have, when we do it, we also multiply by two because we have a corresponding one uh, on this side. We have a corresponding face on this side. So we find the area of this uh, face. This face, it has a corresponding one on the other side. So we find the area of this, we multiply by two also. So we find the area of the rectangular face, the rectangular vertical face of the, of the prism, and then we multiply by two, okay? We multiply by two. So the face looks like something like this. It looks like something like this, just a quick show of how the face look. So we have the, this place to be eight. We have here to be eight. And we have here to be the radius, which is 23 which we calculated, which is 23, right? Here's 23. So to find the area of this face, you know, we find the area, we multiply the answer by two. Area of this face is equal to length times width, or length times height, whatever you call it, length times width, which is 23 times eight, which is 23 multiplied by eight, multiplied by eight. 23 multiplied by 8, we get, we get uh, 184, and then we're going to multiply by 2. Remember, uh, there are two of it, 184 times 2, we get 300 and something, right? 368. Multiply by 2, we get 368. Remember, we're looking for total surface area. So you find the area of each face, and then in the end, we add them together. So we've done 4. Because you did the area of a sector, you multiply by two because there are two faces of it, that's two already. You've done the area of this face, multiply by two, that's another two, remaining one. Now that face, let's figure it out. And that face is the face that you don't see, it's on this side, on the other, on this side. So we're going to use this arc length as the length of it, and we use this eight as the height of it. So that part that is remaining to conclude the area, uh, the area you know, the arc length is like, although it's like a curve, but even if it's a curve, it's still a length. You can extend it. And we've gotten it to, we told that it's 20, right? That it's 20. The arc length is 20, right? Yes, yeah, 20 centimeters. Okay? Even though it's like this, it's a curve, it's still a le length, which you can straighten. You can straighten it and it will give you the length, right? You can straighten it and it will still give you the length. So this one, is 20 and the height is 8. The height is 8, which is all the width is 8. So we can find, and this one has only one face. It doesn't, 
Once you do this, you don't multiply by 2 because it doesn't have a corresponding one on this side. Only has it only on this side. So it has five faces. This prism has five faces. The one here, the corresponding one on the other side here, the one top, the corresponding one on the bottom, and then this one. So there are five faces. So let's do this last face and then we add all of them together. We did do this last face and then we add all together. Right? So we this is the first one. Remember, this is the first one. After we multiply the two together, and this is the another two, which makes it four. And then let's do this last one, which makes it five. So the area, the area of this face is equal to 20 multiplied by 8. 20 multiplied by 8. So it's not everything you, every time you look for calculator. When you have something like this, just say 2 times 8. You get 16, right? Then you add the zero in front. It's not every time you look for calculator to multiply. So this one will get 160 centimeters squared. Okay, for the area of this face. Now, total surface area. Now, because the question says, question C say we should calculate the total surface area. So you say total surface area, which we call TSA, TSA, which we call the TSA, total surface area, TSA, total surface area, is to add all of them together. You see, 462, which is the uh, area of two faces, plus 368 which is area of two faces, 368, 368, which is also area of two faces, plus 160, which is area of one face, plus 160, which is the area of one face, okay? So everything we add together, we get 990. So total surface area is equal to 990. So our total surface area equals to 990 centimeters square. 990 centimeters square. So the, remember it's area. Even if it's total surface area, is area. So you still put the unit of area, centimeters square in this regard. Now, so that's for question C. Now, let's take a look at question D. Maybe we can do question D so that we'll be closer. We can do question D here. Okay, let's, let's take a look at question D. What does question D want us to do? Question D, what does it want from us? I think it's asking for the volume of the, of the shape. So question D says, calculate, calculate the volume of the prism. Remember, volume is the volume of a prism. Volume of, you know, prism, there are different types of prism. So it doesn't have one uh, singular formula. Volume is just the, the base area of the cross section, area of the cross section multiplied by the length or the height. Area of the cross section, Area of the cross section multiplied by the height or multiplied by the length. Okay, multiplied by the height. In this case, we are multiplied by the height. So our area of cross section is 230, 31 or 230.7. So I can simply, for approximation sake, I say 231 multiplied by the height. The height is 8. Multiplied by the height, this will give us the volume. Okay, so 231 multiplied by 8, what do we get as our volume? volume of the prism. We get 1,800, 1,848. We get 1,848. So that would be the volume, 848 cm3. This time, because we do doing volume, the unit will be centimeter cube. So this is the, so you can check whether you are correct. Okay, and see if you're correct, you tip yourself and uh, you're good to go. Now let's uh, look at another question. Let's look at another question. Question number two, the cone and sphere I show below have the same volume. Okay, so cone and sphere are shown they have the same volume. So we're going to like treat them, we're going to like treat them with the same volume, you know, volume of sphere. We're going to look for the one which we have everything. Volume of sphere is equal to volume of cone. Equal to volume of cone, as stated in this question, is equal to the volume of cone. Okay. So which one we have? And uh, they they've given us the height of the of the cone, and uh, we don't know the slant slant uh, height, and we they didn't give us the radius. So what we can do, 
we have the radius here so we can first of all calculate the volume of this and use that volume of this to find whatever we're looking for here okay we equate it to the volume of this so first of all volume of sphere the formula for volume of sphere we write and we find the volume of sphere so volume of sphere is 4 over 3 4 over 3 4 over 3 pi r of cube volume of uh, sphere is 4 over 3 pi r of cube so you need to know this formula and they give you the radius the only thing you need when you are calculating the volume of a sphere is the radius so we're going to use the radius here so we say vs volume of a sphere is equal to is equal to 4 over 3 4 over 3 times pi 3.14 times 3.14 which is the value of, it, of the pi times the radius to the power of 3 times the radius to the power of 3 now the radius is 6 centimeters so we're going to raise it to power 3 we're going to raise it to power 3 so the first you do raise the 6 to power 3 I think you get 216 right 6 to the power of 3 okay multiply by 3.14 multiply by 3.14 then multiply by 4 multiply by 4 then divide the answer you get by 3 divide the whole answer by 3 divide the answer by 3 so we get 904.32 right so we get 904 904 904.32 or point point up to point seven okay point three two point four point five is okay point six point seven is okay is that okay so that's what we got for the volume of the sphere that's what we got for the volume of the sphere. so they say the volume of the cone is same as the volume of the sphere so we're going to equate this one to volume of cone so indirectly i already have the volume of cone centimeter cube okay you put your centimeter cube indirectly we have the volume of a cone now this one we're going to say calculate the volume of the sphere we've done that a part of the question says we should calculate the volume of the sphere we've done that right we've, we've done the volume of a sphere that's the a part of the question the b part says the base radius of the cone we have to find the base radius okay radius is from the center of the core to the end of this place okay the radius is this one remember we know the height we know the height h is six so we got to use the the formula of calculating the volume of cone this one is six so we got to find the base radius okay so to do that to find the base radius you is to say the B, volume of cone, which is already known. Remember, they say it's same as a sphere. So volume of cone, we have to know the formula. Is 1 over 3, volume of cone, is 1 over 3 pi r square. Remember this, why we say, you know, it's always the base, uh, the cross-sectional area multiplied by height, if you are looking for volume. So the cross-sectional, the cross-section is a circle. This is a circle, that's why we say pi r square for the area of the cross section. Times the height, times the height. This is the formula for calculating the, the volume of a cone. This is the formula for calculating the volume of a cone. So, uh, if you know the formula, then the problem is half solved. And the rest is to keep the values to the formula. So we say this is equal to 1 all over 3, 1 all over 3 times pi, pi is 3.14 times 3.14. 3.14 times our radius which is 6 so we say 6 square this time around square not a cube c square times what's the height oh no sorry we don't know the radius that's what they asked us to calculate we don't know the radius is the height that is 6 so we we put r square here we don't know the radius right so we say times r square that's what they want us to calculate then times 6 times 6. So what will we do? We're going to put the vo uh, value of the volume here. What's the volume? 
is 904 or 905 okay 904 905 whatever you got you can use so you say 904 is equal to 1 all over 3 so this 3 we multiply the volume right because you are cross multiplied 1 over 3 1 all over 3 times 3.14 3 point 3.14 3 times 6 okay here let's just multiply this and this uh, what's the value of uh, 3.14 times 6 3.14 times 6 3.14 times 6 what do we get 3.14 times 6 we get uh, 80.86 so we say times 1 we get 80.86 80 point a6 80.86 arrow square 80.86 arrow square meaning we multiply all this numerator 1 times 3.14 is 3.14 times arrow square times 6 we get 80.86 arrow square over this there we cross multiply this one see this 3 we multiply 904 904 times 3 904 times 3 we get our values we get we get 2000 904 times 3 we get 3013 so we get 3000 we get 3030 3030.3 okay we can score that one equal to 18 2000 sorry it's not 3000 2712 2000 this is 2712 you get 2712 so if you multiply, cross multiply you get 2712 is equals to 18.6 18.86 arrow square so we're going to first divide both sides by 18.6 18.86 so we divide this one by 18.86 we get only arrow square left 18.86 we also do the same to the left side we divide here by 18.86 18.86 so this we cancel this one this one we cancel this one so we have only arrow square on one side equal to 2712 divided by 18.86 we get 144 approximately 144 so we get 144 approximately 144 now this 144 is arrow square it's not r so to find r is to get the square root of uh, both sides so you take the square root of this take the square root of this side you get your answer so the square root of 144 will be 12, right? Square root of this value will be 12. So radius is equals to 12 centimeter. Radius is equals to 12 centimeter. So the radius of the radius, the B part of the question, because the B part of the question says we should calculate the base radius of the cone. So we've calculated the base radius of the cone. So we can come and put the base radius on the cone. So here here is 12 centimeter the base radius of the cone is 12 centimeter okay is 12 centimeter then he said the C question say find the slide the slant height of height s centimeter this one this is called the slant height now here to find the C the slant height we're going to bring out a right angle triangle from here using Pythagoras theory this is Pythagoras theory. We're going to bring a right angle triangle. This is the height. This is the slant height L or X in this question. And this is the radius 12 centimeter. And it forms a right angle triangle. This forms a right angle triangle. So we're going to use Pythagoras theory. Here is 12. And the height is 6. The height is 6. This is Pythagoras theory. We find X. Okay? We find X centimeter. So remember this. So to find the X, centimeter we say x square the, the longer side which is the hypotenuse s square is equal to the square the, the the sum of the square of this other side 
So a square is equal to c square plus 12 square. C square plus 12 square. Plus 12 square. So c square is 36. 12 square is 144. 144. So we add this together. 144 plus 36. What do we get? Okay, we get, you add this to this, you get 0, carry 1, bring 1 here, 7 plus this, 8, 180, we get 180, okay, that's x squared. So to find x is to find the square root of 180, to find x is to find the square root of 180, so take square root of both sides, x will be what, root 180, what do you get for root 180, if you take the square root of 180, okay, we take square root of 180, we get 13.4. Okay, so this slab height will be 13.4 centimeter. 13.4 centimeter. 13.4 centimeter. I think they will ask us for the total surface area of the cone or surface area of the cone. Once you know this, you can calculate the surface area of a cone. 13.4. Okay, 13.4 centimeter. That's what x is. So we're done with x. We're done with this uh, c part of the question. Now to calculate the d part, you say the surface area. Surface area of a cone has a formula. The surface area of a cone has a formula. This is c. Okay, this question c. Now let's do d here. Question d. Surface area has a formula. The surface area of a cone, okay, surface area is equal to the area of the base radius and the area of the curve part, curve body. So this is equals to pi, uh, pi r square plus, plus pi r square plus pi r l. Pi r square plus pi r x or pi r l. Pi r l. Is the slot height is l, which they use, they use x in this regard, okay? So this is the formula for the, uh, for the total surface area. But you can factorize. If we factorize, it becomes pi r into r plus l. Pi r into, because if you take out pi r, it's common to both sides. Take it out, you have r left here. You have r left on, the, on, on this side. Plus, what is left here is l. So if you factorize, we get this. So we key in the value, pi is 3.14, 3.14 times the radius, our radius is what, 12, right, times 12, times 12, you open a bracket, then you say, you write the 12, because the, there's another radius inside, so you say 12 plus the slat height, remember we got the slat height to be 30.4. Which is approximately 13 in any case, if we don't want, if we want to have a round number. Okay, 30.4. Okay, so, which means if you add this, what is inside the bracket, you know, in bit mass, this take us, takes us to chapter 3 of uh, mathematics, bit mass. In bit mass, you have to treat what is inside the bracket first. In board mass or bit mass, you treat what is inside the bracket first. So you add this plus this you get 25.4. Uh, so you have 25.4. So we have 25, 25.4. If you add 12 plus 13.4, we get 25.4 multiply because it's a bracket, it's going to be multiplied with this, whatever we get from here. Here we get 3.14 times 12. What do we get? 3.14 multiplied by 12. We get 37.7. .7. Here we get 37.7. .7. If you multiply this one, this two, 3.14 times 12, we get 37.7. .7. Then that 37.7 .7 multiplied by this one, multiplied by 25, 25.4. 37.704 multiplied by 25.4. We will get our final answer for the surface area. We get our final answer for the surface area. So our surface area will be 
uh, sorry, 957.07 or 0.1. 957.1957.0 something you just say point, point 0.07 which is point 0.1 centimeter squared this is the surface area of the cone this is the surface area of the cone okay so we get the surface area of the cone so all this we might you if you can pause the video refer to our maceration Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, Part 4 in Wisdom Academy. Watch, like, subscribe, and share. Okay? Now we have another question. We have another question. I think we end this section here. We will, uh, we will uh, look at the next questions in the next section. Thank you very much.